Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be running you through how to scale a go-kart the easy way. Now, this question has come from you guys out there on the interwebs, so kudos to you guys. Thanks to everybody that has left a comment below and a suggestion for a video. We're slowly making our way through them. Also, too, I'd like to make a special shout out to all our Patreons and YouTube members. We really appreciate that extra little bit of support, so thanks to you guys. Now on to today's video. So over the last couple of weeks, we've been fielding a lot of questions about karting, and one that keeps coming up is how to scale and weight your go-kart for optimum performance. We've got ourselves a Tony kart here. We've got ourselves four bathroom scales. Now you can use the fancy long acre digital corner weight scales, which is probably the optimum way, but most guys aren't really gonna have the resources to get that done at home in the home garage. So what we've done is we've ripped down to the local shops, got ourselves some cheap bathroom scales, and we're gonna show you how to position them under the wheels, take down the measurements, and then start adding lead ballast around the cart in different positions to try to get the weight distribution just how we want it. Okay, so we've armed ourselves with four cheap bathroom scales. I've got myself a little notepad here and a pen, and I'm simply gonna slide these down underneath the go-kart wheels on some smooth concrete, and then start taking down the measurements of the, each corner weight, and then I'm gonna sit in the cart, and with the help of an assistant, they're gonna write down the weights for me for comparisons. So we're just gonna simply lift the go-kart up, slide it under the front wheel here, and then do the same on the all four corners. So now that we've got the cart on the scales, we're just gonna record the measurements with no one in it, then I'm going to sit in the cart and with the help of an assistant, I'm going to record those data points and make the comparisons and then start adding the lead to compensate. So what I like to do first is record the empty weights and then jump in the cart and with someone going around and seeing the scales calling it out, we're going to record the weight of the cart on each corner weight scale with me sitting in it. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not wearing my suit, boots, helmet, gloves. And to be honest, this is not even my go-kart. So it's just an example. So if you were at home and you were trying to get your cart absolutely perfect, make sure you chuck your boots, suits and, and helmet on, just as you would in a race, fill the tires up with air and the fuel tank up with fuel of where approximately you're gonna be running it. And then that way you'll get the best overall picture of how the cart's gonna be weighted when it's on the track. Front right, 34 kilos. Rear right, 45 kilos. Rear left is 50 kilos. And front left is 31 kilos. Now, as you can see in the video, this seat is actually too big for me and I can move around and I can get nearly a two kilo shift in the rear of the cart. I know the back right goes to 46.5 and the back left goes down to 49 kilos depending on where I'm sitting in the go-kart. So now with some simple mathematics, we're just gonna add the two front numbers together with me sitting in the cart, 31 and 34, we get 65, and 50 and 45, so we get 95 kgs in the rear. If we add those two numbers together, we get 160 kilos, and now we can do the percentages. And to do that, we simply get ourselves a calculator, and we divide the small number by the big number, or 95, divided by 160, so we've got 59.5% in the rear. And then divide 65 by 160. And we've got our 40% for the front. So as you can see from this example, this go-kart's actually weighted a little bit heavy in the rear. So what we would do if we needed to add lead, which we do, is we'd start to add it to the very front of the car, or we would have to move the seat forward. So this one is probably set up more for better traction at 59% or 60%, 40%, which is near enough for this example. Uh, we've got to have a tendency to have good acceleration and maybe a little bit of understeer, as opposed to the classic 43-57 split, where the... Uh, cart is going to be more direct to steer. So that's better for different types of tires. So it really depends on the type of tires you're using. If you've got like a really sticky tire that's always having a tendency to understeer because you've got the rears overpowering the fronts, then you're going to want 
to move that weight forward by moving the seat forward. Otherwise, if you're always lighting up the rears, you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit more weight to the back of the cart, a bit like that, what this one is set, and you'd have cured your oversteer ever so slightly by shifting the weight backwards. So what we've done here is we've added two kilos of lead to the front of the go-kart, and now we can recalculate our corner weights. So this one's 36 kilos, and this one's 31.5 kilos. So now we're gonna add the numbers together again, and that is 60. 7.5, the rears are unchanged at 95. So the new weight is 162.5 kilos. We can do our maths again. So 67.5 divided by 162, 41.5%. And for the rear, 95 divided by 162.5 is 58.5 percent. So you can see we're getting closer to our more traditional weight split of say 43 percent 57. So as you can see that's a really simple way to get an idea of your corner weights and whether you need to add lead to the front of the cart or the back. Now in my case I had to add two or three kilos to get myself to the minimum class weight of 162 with a half a tank of fuel. Now I would be wearing some race gear on race day, uh, however your clothes and your shoes are pretty close to the race suit, but obviously the helmet, neck brace, rib protector is going to add a little bit of mass to your body, which is going to add some more weight to the back. So if this was your racing machine and you wanted it perfect, definitely put on all your race gear. So if you do need to add some lead to the seat because you're light on the back end or on the side, get yourself your battery operated drill and an 8.5 and we're going to drill some holes in the seat and show you how to add the lead. So with a countersunk bolt and a little washer we're going to feed that through the seat because we will light on this side of the car or maybe you were maybe you weren't but for the example we just wanted to add a little piece of lead here to make the rear of the car a little heavier. If your car was light on the back right you could drill yourself a hole over on this side of the seat and just slide your bolt through there and put your lead on the back of the seat there. So for us, our weight bias was a little rear heavy, so we're gonna to start to put our lead on the front of the cart or here underneath the cheeks of the seat. Okay, so that's how we weight and scale a go-kart. Now, in our example, we only had to add maybe two or three kilos, but for some of you guys that need to add 18 kilos, okay, I would recommend doing this at home and getting a rough plan of where you're gonna place your lead, and then maybe take some of it off and go to the track, and just see if your cart's balanced and you're happy with the way it's performing. It's not too understeer, not too oversteer. And then you can slowly add that extra weight to the cart in two kilo chunks to see if it starts to upset the program. And if it does, you can just easily reverse it and you're not trying to have to re-engineer the whole cart. If you've made it this far through the video, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. If you like the video, make sure you smash that like button because it really means a lot to us. Thanks to everyone that's been following us on Instagram and Facebook, blowing up on the internet, Power Public. See you in the next video.